2021 Honda Insight courtesy of Apple Honda in Hanover, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so what did you check this one out today? Because I have actually not yet reviewed the Honda Insight, so that makes it exciting for me. And the miles per gallon, of course, and the price point are actually pretty appealing on this one. So having said that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so there will be a few different trim levels for the 2021 Insight. First one being the LX, starting at $22,930. EX, which is the one we have today, starting at $24,810. And lastly, the Touring, starting at $28,840. And so regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on this one will be the same. Powering the Insight is going to come from a 1.5 liter inline four cylinder with two electric motors, putting out a combined 120 29 horsepower at 4,000 RPM, 197 pound-feet of torque available from the power band of 0 to 3,000 RPM. It's one of those things you see when you have electric motors, of course. Power sent to the front wheels through a CVT. 0 to 60 time comes in at approximately 7.3 seconds, which we will be testing out in a little bit here. And by the way, we got paddle shifters too, another thing we'll be testing out. But MPG numbers come in at 55 in the city, 49 on the highway. We'll get to see what that's like. And of of course the insight is going to take regular unleaded fuel so you get to save a little bit of money there as well but before we do any kind of paddle shifter test or acceleration test i did want to mention there are some drive modes those drive mode buttons are located kind of behind the drive buttons and actually i should mention that as well to actually put this one in drive you just press the d to put in a reverse you pull back next to the r and park of course is the p but anyways drive modes are going to include normal econ sport and ev and so as you can imagine this is going to adjust different things like the shift points kind of it is a cvt also throttle response climate control settings and the ev mode that is going to be your full electric or full battery powered mode so ultimately that is going to be the best mpgs you could possibly get in that mode but now having said that let's go ahead and find a straightaway here you guys and let's test out the paddle shifters first although it is a cvt i still like that they're there and i want to see how quickly they're actually going to react for us here all right paddle shifters you guys Okay. I feel like the paddle shifters did absolutely nothing there, quite honestly. Um, still, if I hit them, it still doesn't feel like it's doing anything. I don't know, it just feels weird. I put it in sport driving mode there. I tested out the paddle shifters. It tells me I'm in manual shift mode, but I can't hear anything. There's no difference whatsoever when I'm shifting through the gears there. So I would say on the inside, at least, these paddle shifters are more or less pointless, just to be quite honest. But having said that, let's go ahead and give control back to the inside here. Let's find a straightaway and let's do a quick little acceleration with the inside having full control. Let's see how quickly this thing is going to get us here up to speed. All right, acceleration, here we go. Huh. Actually, you guys, not bad on the acceleration end of things. That was actually kind of surprising. I didn't expect that from an insight, <laughs> quite honestly, but yeah really decent acceleration there actually almost spinning the front tires a little bit as well but actually grip was there so wasn't spinning but yeah that was a good acceleration for the inside i'm kind of impressed there but to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important and so up front you will find 11.1 inch ventilated front discs in the back 10.2 inch solid rear discs as far as that 60 to 0 stopping distance goes it's going to come in at 122 feet which is actually very respectable for comparison's sake if you were to compare the insight to the toyota prius prius comes in at 131 feet for that braking distance so you are going to get better braking in the insight as far as the braking field goes it's been perfectly fine for me there's really no issues with the braking feel for me at least in my short test drive here today touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to find a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars as far as the steering feel goes that's probably one thing again that surprised me with the inside i don't know usually when you think about hybrids or any kind of electric powered vehicles you think they're not going to be as fun to drive minus maybe tesla but anyways the steering feel is pleasantly weighted i guess you could say it has a very nice weight to it it's not too loosey-goosey like most suvs i drive i guess so really the steering feel is perfect for the insight i will say that so once again i was pleasantly surprised there and not only that the steering wheel grips again are perfect a lot of times you can expect the grips on a car like this to be kind of 
wimpy or smaller, but the 10 and 2 grips on the inside are actually quite nice. It fits my hands perfectly, at least, so I did like that as well. And as far as ride quality goes, it's been pretty much on point. Certainly no issues there. I would definitely say it's even on the smoother side than most other vehicles that I do test. So very nice ride quality on the inside as far as cabin noise goes. That's again perfectly fine, especially when you're cruising around city streets in EV mode. This thing is so ridiculously quiet. I absolutely love it. It's kind of interesting. It's something that I'm not used to driving a very modified for Mustang GT, which is super loud. So definitely an interesting feeling as far as the quietness goes on the inside. And as far as visibility goes, I can see perfectly fine out the back. And really with most sedans, you're absolutely not going to have any issues there. So visibility is certainly on point as well. Did want to also mention though, if you go with the touring trim level of the insight, you will actually also find rain sensing windshield wipers, which essentially means when the insight detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers, just like automatic headlights. It's just one less thing you got to worry about. So that's a pretty cool feature there. And again, it's only with the touring trim level if you wanted that. But that about rounds up the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2021 Honda Insight. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2021 Honda Insight. First thing I wanted to mention on the exterior is that there is a new color for 2021, actually, labeled Radiant Red Metallic, in case any of you guys wanted to check it out. It's a pretty cool color, but let's go ahead and start up front on the Insight here. Very Civic-like front end, which is a good thing in my opinion. I actually like the front end on this one. LED headlights do come standard across the board for all trim levels. That, of course, comes with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, they will turn on automatically for you there. LED fog lights are going to come with the touring trim level only. They are going to be found just below those headlights, although we don't, of course, have them right now. And I do like the dark chrome trim accents above the Honda emblem and as well as above the headlights. They look pretty good up there too. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the sides of the Honda inside here. And so touching on the side, chrome window surrounds will come standard across the board. Body colored door handles also standard. And those door handles will actually get chrome accents if you were to go with the touring trim level only if you wanted that body colored power adjustable heated side mirrors come standard for all trim levels touring is going to give you led integrated turn signals within them as well and of course you guys can probably see that hybrid badging found on the front fenders that is specific of course to the insight and comes standard on all trims and take a look down at the wheel setup 16 inch alloys coming with the lx and ex and then you get 17 inch alloys if you were to jump up to the touring trim level so therefore you guys are looking at 16 inch alloys right now and they look pretty good in my opinion but now let's make our way to the back of the inside here. So first starting up top, you will find a shark fin antenna coming standard across the board. There's kind of an integrated rear spoiler looking thing back there. It's not a real spoiler, but it is kind of integrated into that trunk. It looks good. It's kind of a lip type look. You will get that hybrid badging found on the trunk itself. LED taillights are going to come standard once again across the board as well. And just below it all, guys might be able to see it there. There is a hidden single exhaust outlet. So therefore I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always here is that exhaust clip. It's open now since we are around back of the Insight. When it comes to opening that rear trunk, there is a button on the key fob that is one way. There's a button on the trunk itself and there is a button on the driver's side door as well. So a few different ways to open that one up. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 14.7 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up quite a bit. There is rear cargo lighting back there as well, and overall a decent amount of space for the size of this vehicle. Making our way then to the rear legroom, that comes in at 37.4 inches. So for reference, I'm at even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in that back seat there. There is also a rear center armrest for the EX and touring trim levels if you wanted that. But a couple things I did not find was rear ventilation or rear USB charging port so i would have liked to have seen that but, but i will say ultimately plenty comfortable for those who are passengers but then make your way to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the lx and ex now of course is what you're looking at right now touring trim level is going to add to that an eight-way power driver seat heated front seats and a four-way power adjustable passenger seat as well and once again seats are plenty comfortable no issues for me there taking a look at the steering wheel and it is and telescoping it is leather wrapped for the touring trim level level 
only. Otherwise, you're going to get that urethane finish. And I will say, once again, 1082 grips are brilliant. Perhaps one of the best grips I've test driven in quite a while. So I love that. Then make your way to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. It is an insight specific key. And perhaps the main way you can tell that is you do have all blue on one side of the key. It's pretty cool. Other side, you're going to have lock, unlock the button to pop the rear hatch. And that circular button is actually going to be your remote start. So you can start this one up without actually getting inside. That's always convenient. But in addition to that, there is a push button start coming standard for all trim levels across the board. So all I'm going to do is simply just put my foot on the brake and press that bright red engine start button located just to the left of the tech display there. And so then once started up, gauges will do a full sweep on the left side of the screen. It is all a digital gauge cluster. On the right side, you will have your speedometer. But having said that, the left side, you can adjust that using the steering wheel mounted controls on the left side of the steering wheel. And that's gonna show you a bunch of different things as well as your driving modes actually as well average fuel economy which we managed to hit 49.8 mpgs today even with a couple accelerations there so that's pretty darn good how many miles you have left until you hit empty which is always going to be relatively high in the insight so that's pretty cool as well and of course you got your trip information outside temperature and the rest of the basics basically but make our way now to overall interior quality power moonroof is going to come with the touring trim level only that touring is also going to give you home link controls throughout the three different garage doors and dual zoom climate controls control as well. But on the other trim levels, all trims are actually going to give you LED ambient console lighting, which is pretty cool to find. Also automatic climate control. And so automatic meaning you could set the temperature and the Insight is going to hit that temperature for you. So that's always convenient. Just to the right of those shift buttons, there is a little bit of storage for more than likely a cell phone. It's a perfect size for a cell phone. So I'm assuming that's what that is for. Just in front of that, you have a 12 volt power outlet, two USB charging ports, lecture mechanical parking brake can be found behind that. You do also have dual cup holders and within the center armrest a decent amount of storage within that as well so overall everything pretty practical interior quality is just fine there are some soft touch finishes just above the passenger side glove box with some stitching personally i wouldn't have minded some contrast colors on this one so maybe a lighter interior but overall that's just my personal preference interior quality is perfectly fine on this one then make our way now to the tech display though five inch color lcd screen coming just with the lx trim level if you were to jump up to the EX that we have today or the Touring, you will get an eight inch color touchscreen display. Either way though, you actually still get Bluetooth and audio streaming. However, you will need the larger screen if you want Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. And essentially what that is, you hook your smartphone up to the Insight and therefore you have free navigation displayed up on that screen, as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs. And there's a couple other compatible apps as well. Factory navigation system is going to come with the touring trim level only. You can also set that screen to a clock view. It's something I always kind of liked in Hondas. I don't know, it's just my personal preference there. You can also check out your radio settings up there as expected, I guess. Six speakers and 160 watts is going to come with the LX. EX is going to bump that up to eight speakers and 180 watts. Touring is gonna to bump that up yet again to 10 speakers and 450 watts. So having said that, you guys know we always have to do, let's just go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. It's not bad, actually more bass than I expected. Decent amount of clarity, not gonna be as good as the Touring, of course, but it's not bad for an eight speaker sound system. I will say that, it's plenty fine for me, but Last thing on that tech display I wanted to mention to you guys is when you do put the Insight in reverse, you will find a rear view camera. All trim levels across the board is going to get that. And as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so best thing about the Honda Insight safety, when it comes to IIHS, the Honda Insight is a top safety pick plus which by the way is the very highest designation given by IIHS. So it's a heck of a start right there. Front side, side gear and airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also back there, rear child door locks. There is a tire pressure monitoring system and standard across the board, Honda Sensing. And so Honda Sensing is going to include a plethora of advanced safety features, including collision mitigation, braking system, road departure mitigation system, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, traffic sign recognition, which I noticed it will display the speed limit within those gauges of any given road, letting you know what speed you're going so you don't get any speeding tickets perhaps. Also a forward collision warning system, lane departure warning as well. And you will also get automatic high beams for all trim levels. And here's one of the new safety features for the 2021 Insight, 
blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert that is new specifically to the 2021 that's going to be with the ex and touring trim levels only you will not get it on the lx so i did want to specify that as well but Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts of the 2021 Insight, if you were looking for great fuel economy, really, this is a heck of a bargain. And I put it that way because it is an excellent price point for the fuel economy that you're going to get when it comes to new vehicles out there. I will say that good styling for a hybrid actually as well. It looks a heck of a lot like the Civic, which is a very good thing. Civic is a very good looking vehicle. It sells a heck of a lot of units for Honda. So basically very good styling in my opinion, especially for a hybrid great safety on this one again an iihs top safety pick plus along with honda sensing that's definitely a good thing and again a great starting price point for a hybrid steering feel is plenty fine especially the 10 and 2 grips of the inside i absolutely loved that came unexpected for me but overall let me know what you guys think of the honda insight in the comments section